All right, well, thanks for that intro, Jonathan. Uh, so let's just get started here. So essentially what I'm gonna to talk to you about is building Windows Store apps with HTML and JavaScript. So my name again is Mark Artiaga, and if you wanna contact me uh, after the session, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or my email address uh, right there. It's just my name, Mark Artiaga, and email info at my name, markartiaga.com. So if you know web technologies, uh, essentially you're ready to build apps for the Windows Store. Web technologies, uh, you know, if you've built uh, websites using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you have the skills to build your application for the Windows Store, uh, for the marketplace. Windows 8, there's a couple of, a, two different types of apps that you could build. So you could build desktop apps and Windows Store apps. So on the desktop apps, you have, in the IE browser, you have HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, running in, uh, within Internet Explorer or any other browser. You have Win32 apps running in C++ or C, and then you have .NET and Silverlight apps using C Sharp and VB. On the Windows Store app side, you have XAML. So HD, you have XAML running C or C++, uh, or XAML using C Sharp and VB. You also have HTML, CSS, running JavaScript underneath. And today's focus is gonna be again, HTML, JavaScript, uh, and how to build those apps for the Windows Store. Now, the JavaScript engine that's running is the same JavaScript engine that IE10 has on the desktop. So we have the same engine, and then underneath uh, for Windows Store apps, it connects into the WinRT APIs, or the Windows Runtime APIs. And there you have things like communication and data, graphics media, the application model, and that core uh, fra uh, framework, WinRT, connects into the Windows Core OS services. So all that connects in there, uh, so you get straight access into the core, uh, core Windows operating system uh, from the system services and from your uh, HTML JavaScript application. So it's all about web standards. So Microsoft didn't go out and create their own um, HTML framework to run these uh, to, to build HTML apps for the Windows Store. Um, it started with IE9, and essentially what they brought there is HTML5 standard so you could start using in the IE9 browser. And again, it's the same JavaScript engine and browser engine that's running on the desktop that is running in your Windows Store app. So here you have things like CSS, 2D transforms, uh, all these CSS um, uh, values, uh, selectors, namespaces, media queries. Um, but one of the key things to remember is it's hardware accelerated platform. So that gives you, uh, you know, some of the nice uh, optimizations, performance, and all that thing. Now in IE10, uh, it's still hardware accelerated, but they've improved on it. So IE10 brings more HTML5 standard. It brings, um, you know, things like drag and drop, history API, parser, it's running in a sandbox. Uh, you still have uh, ECMAScript 5 support. And on the CSS side, you have the biggest thing is 3D transforms and animations that are brought in, into, the, uh, into the engine, into the browser. And we'll go through some, through some samples there uh, on the HTML side, uh, what you can do in the browser, and then how we can bring that over to a Windows 8 app, app, application. So some of the popular CSS, CSS features, CSS3 features in Windows 8 are 2D and 3D transforms. Uh, motion, so you got animations and transitions that you could do from the, your CSS file. Uh, layout, grid, and flexbox, that is uh, new into the, into the platform. You have graphics. Uh, you could do gradients, you could do text shadows, filter effects, all those graphs you could do and content flow. And content flow is great for news type applications uh, where you want to uh, have multiple pages or you want to have columns and, and things like that uh, within your application. And again, hardware acceleration uh, built into the, into the browser, it leverages the hardware and it makes all the transitions, all the motions, everything is, is fast and, and performant and you're not gonna get any, any stuttering. Now, 
we'll quickly hop into a, our first demo. And the first demo is going to be in the browser. So if you go to the IE test drive, uh, you will see right here, and we'll have these links available uh, afterwards, but essentially uh, the Windows 8 HTML5 platform. There's a bunch of demos here that you could run. And the first one I'm going to run is 3D Transforms. So 3D, 3D Transforms are basically some CSS styles that you could set to transform a div element. So right here we have a div element. Uh, and again, we're all in, in the browser here. I am going to add a translate 3D. I'm going to rotate it. So you notice here it's rotating. I'll go over here. I can set the, um, the X and I can set the Y and do things like that. So you can move all these uh, values. I'm going to change that. But if you notice down here, the CSS, the CSS changes and it's just a CSS. So there's no JavaScript involved here. It's just all CSS to change the location of the div element. And again, you could go in and play with this. There's a whole bunch of different um, properties that you could set uh, within the CSS. And then the next one I want to show is the grid layout. So grid layout, if you're coming from a XAML uh, background, uh, grid layout, you're probably familiar with it. So now this grid layout is available on uh, modern browsers, on HTML, and in your Windows app, Windows type app. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this pre-done grid layout. And I'm going to go in here. So you see there's a, all the CSS is set down here. And what it does, it sets these, these items, these divs, and it says the grid column, the grid row, and everything. And you can just go set these values. So in here, we say, you know, it's going to start at grid column two, and you could change that. And here we're spanning for the top one up here. We are spanning three columns, and you could go in and you could change that. Now, one of the other things is the grid size. So on the grid size, we say, just let me go into the structure and I'll show you. So we want to say the display is MS grid, and we're going to say there are three columns, uh, three columns, the first one being 100 pixels, this, uh, the last one being 100 pixels, and the one in the middle basically says 1FR means take the rest of the space that's available. So as we expand this, you know, we could change these columns over here to be smaller, and we could change the grid size to be 100 pixels uh, to lower the pixel size. And you notice that because we're 200 pixels, the top and bottom is 200, it's going to take up all the space, so there's not, no room left for the middle. And the same if you, if you change the, the width. So you notice the end rows stay the same size, but the middle resizes. So grids are something that you, you will most likely be using a lot in your application, uh, depending on your, on your application. Uh, so it's something you definitely want to get familiar with. And using the IE test drive, HTML5 uh, samples, uh, you can definitely get familiar with it. So that is our first demo. And for now, we're you know, in the browser. So I just want to show you how it's you know, coming from the browser, you could um, use the same CSS and uh, JavaScript from the browser, and next demo we'll show you how to bring that over. But first we'll go through some of the uh, popular HTML5 features in Windows 8. So we have things like WebSockets. So you could do socket connections from the browser uh, and from your Windows 8 application. So web workers, so you can run a web work worker within your application, IndexedDB, it is ECMAScript 5 compliant. Um, and you have things like geolocation, audio tag, and video tags. Uh, geolocation, for example, if you, there are standard geolocation APIs in HTML5, uh, but on the Windows 8 side in WinJS, there's also geolocation, uh, its own geolocation APIs. If you're bringing code over, you know, you could use your existing geolocation HTML5 code. Um, 
if you're starting from scratch, you probably want to use the WinJS. But essentially, all that goes down into the core uh, operating system, uh, Windows OS, that gives you the geolocation functionality. Um, so two, two places to code it goes into the same location. Uh, the other key point is touch first. Uh, so Windows 8 was built for touch first. Uh, there are, there's new MS Pointer events that we will, uh, that I'll go through. Uh, but essentially MS Pointer events brings all the different types of uh, pointers which combine touch, uh, combines pen, and combines the mouse. So if you use MS Pointer, you get all these things for free. Uh, which is which is really nice, and again, we'll go through that. And then forms, you know, there's form validation that you can do and spell checking that's uh, built right in. And again, these are all HTML5 features that you can use in your Windows 8 app or within your um, uh, IE uh, application. So now let's go to an HTML5 demo. Just give me one sec as I bring it up. So in this demo here, we do touch effects. So unfortunately, I don't have a, um, a touch co compatible monitor on my, on my laptop here. Uh, but what it does is essentially, as I use my mouse, you'll see uh, all the balls move around. So you could change this, change some of the, some of the values. Um, but if I had a touch screen, uh, I could use my finger or a pen, and the same thing would happen. So internally, it's using the MS, uh, MS pointer down, up, and things like that. And we'll go through that. And then this, you know, you could also switch it to Bs if you want to have Bs in there. And away you go. So very, you know, hardware accelerated. You see the, the effects are, are pretty nice and all running in the browser. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this application and we're going to port it over to a Windows 8 application. So I'm going to grab the source. And you see there, there's, it's all HTML. And I'm going to go in and create a new Visual Studio project. So when you're using uh, Visual Studio, if you want to develop for Windows 8 applications, essentially what you could do, uh, you just download the tools. All the tools are free. You get Visual Studio Express for Windows 8, and you'll be able to start right away to, you know, developing for Windows 8. If you're, you notice here, I'm on the Ultimate. You just download the SDK, and it in integrates directly with it. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to go to... JavaScript, and I'm going to just create a blank app. So the JavaScript, uh, you have all these different templates. Uh, the main ones I use are blank app or navigation app. Uh, some of the other ones I, I don't tend to use. It has some sample code. It's great to get familiar with. Um, you know, there's some sample data in there and how to lay out your apps. Uh, but we're going to start with a blank app. And... I'm going to change this directory into there, and I'm just going to call it app1. And then click OK. So Visual Studio is going to create the project for us the, using the template, the blank template. Give it a second there. And soon it will come up. There we go. OK. So in, a, in the, one of the next demos, I'm going to go through some of all this uh, information, like the app activated, WinJS, and, and some of the features of Visual Studio. But right now, our goal is to just essentially bring over this um, IE, you know, test drive sample application into Windows 8. So I'm going to open up default.html, and as you see, it's all you know, HTML in here. We have some references to our default CSS and default.js, and we have a body tag. So I want to take the existing code that is available, and I'm going to copy it. Now this is one of the best ways to share code is copy and paste. 
probably not the best way to maintain it, but you know, it's good for demo purposes. So you see here, we have a bunch of um, includes uh, for style sheets and we have some uh, JavaScripts. So I've already set up some, the includes and I'm just going to drag a folder in here and the includes have our scripts and our styles. I haven't modified it. I just, um, you know, have it locally on my computer. So we could do that. But what I'm also going to do is I have to change this and change it to point to there. So I'm going to replace all of those. Uh, just go on the current document. So there's six places. And then I also have to add a few files to the root of the application. So there we go. So now body on load is going to call setup world, which is some existing code. And in that setup world, it goes in and it, again, you could go through all this code. It's available, but here your mouse down, MS pointer, mouse down, mouse up. It adds event listeners into there. And one of the key things to know uh, is for the canvas. So it uses an HTML5 canvas. You, def you, need, you need to set the MS touch action to none. And this will allow you to grab all these uh, in the canvas. When the user touches it, it'll allow um, all the events to trickle up into your JavaScript code. So I'm just going to run it on the local machine. And I'm going to cross my fingers. It's taking a little bit of time. All right. So now it is running here. And there we go. So there's our, our balls, the same thing. Things are running. You'll see things, it's unfortunately, it's running a little bit slow on my machine. It wasn't yesterday. Uh, but it's usually, uh, I'm assuming it's because it's streaming. Uh, things are running a little bit slow inside the app, but essentially it works the same way as the other one. Just a tad bit slow because I think there's something running in the background. But that is essentially how we could uh, bring our application into, um, into a Windows 8 app, an existing web application into a Windows 8 app and get it going in, in just a few minutes. Now, I'm gonna switch back and I'm gonna be honest, not all your applications are gonna port that quickly. Um, you know, this one is built for IE. Uh, so it's gonna port a little bit faster than, you know, say another application if you're using jQuery or Dojo or something like some, some of the other uh, libraries that are out there, JavaScript libraries. You know, you, you are gonna to have to do a little bit of work uh, to bring it over, but you can bring it over because it is all standards based and uh, HTML5 based applications. So I'm going to go through some of the things you should be aware of from uh, if you're coming from IE 10, from a web app to a Windows app. So minor differences. Um, I'm going to open up this link. Uh, so there are a few minor differences that you should be aware of. And they basically all have to do on the window object. So window.prompt, window.open, you'll notice that a lot of those are not supported. So if you're using those in your application, um, in your in your web application, you got to go back and you got to kind of figure it out and take those out because it's not supported in a Windows 8 application. Uh, the other thing to be aware of, I'm just going to scroll up here, is the outer and inner HTML properties. So essentially, in in your web application, sometimes you're building up elements using uh, divs. In, with some JavaScript and dynamically building up some uh, HTML within your JavaScript and putting it onto the DOM. Um, Windows 8, because there is security built in, you're running in a sandbox in your Windows 8 application, um, there's certain things that you can't do. So uh, with the security, 
it prevents you from injecting certain scripts. So that protects the user because you are running in a sandbox and you're in a higher trust mode. Um, it prevents you from injecting script, uh, script references or unknown CSS elements into uh, using the outer HTML uh, property. This is just a security, it makes the HTML safer. You know, you, you can't go out there and you can't grab uh, some script that you're running on the server and put it into your Windows 8 app because your app does go through a certification um, uh, procedure uh, and you don't want to, you know, you don't, you don't want to risk having the user, you know, compromise their computer or anything like that. So that's something you want to be aware of. And then there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, minor differences that happen within uh, Windows 8 app compared to a web application. So you just want to go through this and you want to be aware of that. Uh, it's all listed here. Uh, essentially, not too many, uh, but you do want to be aware of those. Uh, the next one is the different hosts. So you got to be aware that there is, uh, there's no plugin. So you are running the uh, the JavaScript engine, uh, but you're not running a, it's not a browser that you're running within your Windows application. So there's no plugins available, uh, you know, Silverlight or Flash, you won't be able to load those up within your Windows 8 application. And there's also this different uh, trust levels. So you could run a, a local context or a web context. And what I did with the, uh, with the sample that we just ported is the local context, we brought all the JavaScript and all the CSS and everything within our Windows 8 app, and then the, uh, we made it in a local context. That gives us a, a higher level of trust. Uh, web context, what I have also could have done is I could have set up an iframe uh, and just pointed to that URL and put it within an iframe. You know, it's lower level of trust. Uh, you can't do. You don't have access into WinJS. And in the in the next slide, I'll kind of go through some of the uh, some of the differences on the on the context, local and web context. UX. Uh, so the first two are recommended um, or things that you need to be aware of. The last two are recommended things. So if you're bringing an application over. Uh, the user experience, you definitely want to look at that because you want your application to look like a Windows 8 application. Um, if you're building a game, it might not apply as much. For example, I mean, you got Cut the Rope that works in the uh, Windows 8 app. It also works in the browser. Uh, it's on different platforms. And they want to bring that consistent look across all the different platforms. So they're not going to really use the, the modern UI. But if you're bringing a web application, you definitely want to look at that. And this, there's a great sample, a design case study, you know, a website to Windows Store app that you, you may want your designer to take a look at. So it's a food truck uh, type application, how to bring it from a web. You'll notice here that it's showing a web application and then how to bring it to a Windows 8 modern UI type application. Um, and it goes through all the different layout and navigation, how you could break it apart. So definitely something you want your designer to uh, take a look at or even you yourself as a developer to become familiar with it. And then you can tell the designers what to do. Um, Windows 8 features, definitely want to look at those. So you want to integrate with the platform as much as possible, such as uh, push notifications, tiles, uh, search contracts, and sharing. And in the upcoming session, I'll go through a little bit more of that uh, on how you could integrate with those and how you could leverage those features that are available to you. So now back to the, uh, to the context, uh, local and web context in, in applications. Uh, so essentially, there's a few features. So in local context, you get access to the Windows runtime, uh, you get access to the Windows library for JavaScript, and cross-domain references or cross-domain requests uh, using a, uh, XHR, which is XML HTTP request object. You can do that within the local context, so it's a higher level of trust. Um, so if you need to do some JSON calls or some AJAX calls, you can do that to a different service. Um, and automatic filtering for script injection. And I went through a little bit of that, some of the inner and outer HTML. Uh, it will do some filtering for you automatically within the local trust. Web context. So you don't have access to the Windows runtime. You don't have access to the, the, the WinJS um, library. 
external references. So you can do external references there, and I'll explain what those are. And no cross-domain and no automatic filtering for script injection. Web contacts, you're essentially running uh, in, in an iframe, so you can do that. Um, now, external script references in the local context, basically what that means is if you're using something like jQuery, uh, what you want to do is you want to bring those files in the local context. So you want to bring those files locally within your app so it's, it's available within your app. You don't want to reference it to a CDN, uh, similar to what you do in a web application. Uh, for one, it doesn't allow you, and for two, the connection may not be there. Uh, whereas a web context, you can reference a CDN. Uh, the other thing to remember with a web context is, um, you know, because it is an iframe, uh, you are going to need a connection all the time. So you need to code for it to make sure that there is a connection. Uh, local context, you still need to figure out if you have a connection, if you're making some, uh, some JavaScript calls to a server or XHR calls, uh, you need to check if there's a web connection. But usually you can run offline. And there is a way to uh, communicate across context. So if you're using an iframe uh, within your local context, there is a way to communicate. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all that. But if you're interested, just uh, send me an email and or we'll have a Q&A and we could answer those. So now we'll go into some of the tools and we'll go straight into Visual Studio. Uh, so I am just going to open up the next demo. Just give me one second. So now this demo is available on the MSDN site and basically it's a cookbook application. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it just to show you what it does. And just give it a second here. So here you see it start up. Uh, let me just. And here you see we have a our application. Um, you know that gives you recipes for different uh, different cultures. So here we have some carrot salad. Uh, it gives you you know the ingredients, the directions on how to do it. Uh, there's a app bar at the bottom so you could pin it and you could set a reminder. You could share using photos or videos. So essentially that is what the application, it's a, it's a recipe type application. Um, there's also semantic zoom. Um, so down here, because I don't have touch, you're going to, you, you're going to get this little minus sign so you can zoom out and you could see everything. And there you see it go. Um, so that, that's essentially the, the application of what it does. What I'm going to do is just kind of go through some of the features of Visual Studio and what you get. So if you built with Visual Studio before other applications, C Sharp, uh, you know the power of Visual Studio and everything that it gives you. Um, one of the great things with uh, HTML5 and JavaScript, Windows 8 apps, is you do have things like IntelliSense support. So here you see I typed in WinJS and you get the drop down, um, everything coming up. You have things like utilities if you want to go into, uh, you know, convert things to pixels or you want to uh, get the height of an element. You have all these utilities that you could, uh, that you could leverage. Uh, using IntelliSense is a great way to see what's available uh, within the WinJS framework and get familiar with it if you've, uh, if you've never developed for it before. Uh, then the next thing is, oops. the next thing that's available is the simulator. So on my machine, I'm running at a certain resolution. Uh, and you know, you could go in and you can manually change your resolutions, change your screen resolution and do all that stuff. What you want to do is you want to build for the different resolutions that are available. Now, there's some, uh, Windows 8 comes with a lot of different form factors. Um, you know, you have 20, 27 inch monitors that you could have, uh, but running in the simulator, you could test in all these different environments. So here, we're running at, uh, we're running at 1366 by 768. 
uh, you notice there, and we can go all the way up to 27 inch. And the 27 inch monitor, you know, I don't have a 27 inch monitor on my laptop, um, but once that goes, you know, your application will automatically refresh and it'll resize. So you want to make sure you code for these You code for these different screen resolutions, and your CSS is, uh, you set the different media elements or media attributes for the different screen sizes. Uh, the other thing you get is uh, touch support. So it has a touch simulator. And the touch simulator allows you to scroll back and forth. I don't have touch on this laptop, so it allows you to simulate the touch events and you can do things like semantic zoom right here and also things like you could set a location and not sure what that is so it was working yesterday uh, but the uh, you can do take screenshots uh, and this is very useful when you are submitting your application you're going to need to submit some screenshots uh, so Simulator is, is, is really, really nice to have uh, so you can make sure your application works on the different resolutions. Um, again, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, you can set things like breakpoints and a couple of breakpoints were, were hit there already. And here you'll see the navigation. Um, it's gonna, this navigator.js is basically standard in the navigation template and it handles all the navigation for you and sets the content of what you want, what you navigate it to, and it enables or disables the, the back button. So I'm gonna go in there and you see breakpoints are set and then it navigates out. Uh, the other nice feature is a DOM Explorer. So you wanna use a DOM Explorer if you're setting some, um, you know, if you're debugging some CSS or something like that. So here you see we could select an element and it'll take us right into the HTML that is that has that element. So another nice feature is the JavaScript console. So JavaScript console allows you to, you know, at runtime, you know, you don't have to set a debugger or be hit at a breakpoint or pause debugging. Um, so you could do that, you could run a console.log or you could do a new uh, windows.ui.popups.messageDialog test.show async. So there you see, it just returned an object. The object that it returns is a promise. And you notice that here on the on the simulator, I now have a message dialog that pops up. Uh, one thing you do want to get familiar with is the async operation. So anything that goes above 50 milliseconds, um, you know, the WinRT or WinJS API will uh, return something called a promise. Uh, and a promise basically is all the async operations. So here, when the when the dialog box gets dismissed, uh, you could call the done, and this function will be called. And here we'll just call console.log uh, dismissed. So now if we go back in and we click close, you'll see in our console we now have a dismissed down here. So those are some of the features that you have in, in Visual Studio. So you definitely want to, you, you can leverage it. You can leverage the debugger and the breakpoints, uh, the JavaScript console. JavaScript console, you could go in there and you can modify variables if you need to. Uh, so definitely something you want to get familiar with and used to when you're developing your applications. So now we'll get into a little bit of WinJS, uh, the Windows, Windows library for JavaScript. So the goal of the Windows JavaScript or the WinJS is to allow developers to, you know, web developers or anyone else to bring their applications to Windows 8 uh, quickly and to make it look, feel a part of the, uh, the Windows 8 platform. So it matches the design uh, styles, it has a bunch of controls that are available in there, um, and it's all 
standards-based web technology that you may you should be already familiar with if you're building uh, HTML5 applications on the web. Um, and there's interactive design tools, so it does come with uh, expression uh, Visual Studio uh, Blend for Windows 8, or Blend for Windows 8, and allows you to modify your HTML, your CSS, and everything. Didn't have enough time to show that, uh, but you definitely want to look at that uh, Blend for uh, HTML5 applications. Now, WinJS allows, uh, has a bunch of uh, classes in there, and some of the namespaces, there's helper namespaces to create classes and namespaces. Uh, so if you want to organize your JavaScript code into classes and things like that, you definitely want to use those. Promises, get familiar with them. Any, like I said, anything over 50 milliseconds in, in the Windows runtime will return a promise, uh, which is essentially your async operations. Uh, so you have it done, and you could pass it in function arguments to say when it's done, or if there's an error, uh, or during progress of something. Uh, the app model, uh, this is for your suspend and resume state. So as, you're, as a user switches, um, switches as a user switches uh, applications, your application will go into the background and it may be suspended. Uh, navigation uh, it handles a lot of the navigation for you, uh, that navigation.js, and there's also some other navigation uh, classes in there. And it comes with uh, page and user controls, other controls, uh, data binding. Uh, there's lots of animation, so to make your application feel, you know, the fast and fluid, uh, you know, sliding in and sliding out, definitely want to take advantage of the animations library that are there. And there's utilities and the default CSS styles that are available, such as light and dark, uh, that style all the controls to make it look like a uh, Windows 8 application. All right, so now we'll get into a, uh, another demo, and we're going to do a Twitter search, or the, you know, the new Hello World. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio, and I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to select the navigation app template. And I'm going to make sure that's on demo four. And I'm going to click OK. So this is going to create a project. What it's going to do, it's going to add references to, to WinJS. Uh, the WinJS runtime, uh, the CSS styles, so the standard styles that are there, and it's going to use the the navigation template to uh, to build our app. So the first thing again, we have the app .add event listener activated. Uh, here, you want to definitely look at this, so you know if you've been terminated um, or if you're being launched from uh, been recently suspended. So at that point, you want to set your, uh, re restore your state, your application state. And then on checkpoint is another one you want to be familiar with. This is where you actually save state. And the navigation sample uh, saves our history. So it goes in and it sets our history. And when it restarts, it comes in and it reloads our history. So the user continues where they left off. Um, Default.html is our main application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment the app bar. So the app bar is a standard control uh, that's available to you. Uh, and the way you define or you set your controls is by setting this attribute right here. So data win control, data dash win dash, dash control, you set the, the type, so winjs.ui.appbar, and then in there you have a bunch of buttons. So I'm going to run this application. And this is just a standard one. And you'll notice that the app bar will load up. You know, this is the app, content goes here. So you're gonna have to go in there and do things. If I right click, the app bar comes up and that's how you, if you're using touch, or if you're using touch, you're going to be swiping. Um, and there's also a keyboard shortcut to get the app bar up. But out of the box, you get touch, you get keyboard shortcuts, and you get mouse support uh, to bring up the, the app bar. Now, how does this load up? 
you definitely should be familiar with winjs.ui.processall. So here in our default.js, it calls processall. And basically what that does is goes through your DOM and checks for any attributes, any data.win.control attributes, figures out which type it is, what type of control, and then loads up all the, um, loads up the control that's available there. Now, the controls are available in here. So you do have access to all the, all the source code for the UI, winjs.ui, and the base class library. So if you see here, there's a lot of code in here. Uh, definitely don't have enough time to go through it. But you definitely want to look at it if you want to see how things work. Uh, if you're not familiar with, um, uh, with JavaScript, it's a great way to learn it and to see how uh, the internals of WinJS are actually working within your application. So now let's actually build the Twitter application. So I'm going to add a folder in here. So I've pre-built this already. And what we have is something called Twitter search, uh, .js. So Twitter search .js, uh, what I'm using is I'm using the classes, winjs.class.define, and I'm just defining a new Twitter search uh, class in here. Um, it goes in here, it just has some methods. It has a refresh method, uh, you know, pass in a search term. So what that does is it makes a search URL, which is our method up here the search URL, and then it creates some XHR options, and XHR is XML HTTP request. Uh, we set the last refresh date, so we could uh, use that in a needs refresh property. And then we call winjs.xhr, and we pass it the options. XHR is basically a wrapper to XML HTTP request, and winjs.xhr returns a promise. Um, so we return that promise to whoever called it, uh, so we know when that request is complete. Uh, needs refresh just goes in, and it's just a getter uh, property in here. So you can do getters and setters within JavaScript. Um, so you sh should be familiar with that, or if not, you should get familiar with it. Um, and here we just do a diff. If it's greater than five seconds, then um, uh, then we allow the uh, we send true for needs refresh. And then our namespace, we define winjs.namespace.define Twitter. Uh, so then in our code, we could do twitter.search and we can instantiate a new Twitter search object. And our HTML, basically what we have for HTML is an input button. And again, standard HTML input button for our search term. Uh, we have a button search. And we have a list box uh, or a list view control. Uh, and this is a um, WinJS control, so a, a custom control that comes with the BC, with the uh, base class library, the WinJS. Um, and we set the grid layout, uh, the layout to grid layout, uh, tap behavior to toggle select, and selection mode to single. One other change we're going to have to do very quickly so everything loads up is cmd we need to change our app bar because we have a refresh button here and the icon is refresh uh, msdn uh, there's a page that has a list of all the icons that are available for the app bar um, so you should be able to search that twitter ui Second. So here, basically, what I'm doing is I am loading up the Twitter UI in the page navigation controller. So I'll save that. And how does it all wire up together? It's in our Twitter UI.js. And in here, we have a, basically uh, some code to wire up event handlers. So here we do document.getElementById, so our button search. We add an event listener, we add a click, 
and our handler. So we have our search handler. And then the app bar, we do the same thing. We add an event listener uh, to the click and we call app bar refresh. So search handler goes in, it grabs a search term. We make sure there's something actually typed in there. And this is where we create our new Twitter search. So here, as you see, we have, um, there we go, there's the IntelliSense support. Uh, so we have Twitter.search, so this is our custom class that we created, and we can instantiate a new object. Uh, we call refresh, and if you remember, refresh returns a promise. So we wanna say uh, Twitter search refresh, and then once it's uh, complete, we wanna update our list. If there's an error, we wanna show a message dialog. And if we wanna show progress, we can show progress here. We're just logging it to the, to the console. And then our update list goes in and it actually um, parses the JSON that Twitter returns and then we bind it. So I will set a breakpoint here, but essentially we make sure we have a global variable in here called list. And if it's null, list is a winjs.binding.list. So this standard out of the box, uh, you give it your array, which are all our tweets that we want to show in there. And then we bind it. So to get the binding going, uh, again, it's document.getElementById, list results. And then you want to use the win control, um, the win control property. And that's only in a winjs type application. You're not going to get that in the browser. Uh, and then you want to set the item data source. So it's very s similar to, um, uh, to C Sharp and XAML. If you've done data binding in there, it's similar to that. Uh, if it's not null, we're just going to go and grab, uh, insert the new tweets that have come in if they've clicked refresh. So I'm going to run this. So I'll just wait for this to load. And here you see we have our Twitter search, and I'm going to run win8dev, search for that hashtag. And our breakpoint got set in here. So here we have our response text that came back from our uh, uh, XHR for refresh. Uh, and then we're just going to parse the JSON and we're going to extract the tweets. So the tweets is going to be an array of items. So you notice there, uh, the array gets set. Uh, and we have a whole bunch in there. And then we just go in and we do our data binding into the list. You notice here we have some raw JSON that, that gets shown. Not the best UI, so we definitely want to change that. So I'm going to go back and into Twitter UI, and I'm just going to copy this tweet template. So you can template your um, your lists, and this is essentially how you do it. So you set your item template, and you say which HTML. Uh, here we're saying use the uh, tweet template ID div, and this is our tweet container. So now if we go back and run this, you'll notice it's a little bit nicer now. Win eight dev. It's going to search, and you notice we have, you know, the person's image and um, uh, the image, the tweet, the name, and here three minutes is just I've hard coded it three minutes, so I don't have to uh, set any of the dates and do all those calculations. And you notice our refresh goes in and it works also. Um, So that is it for our Twitter search. Uh, so Twitter search, again, uh, the new hello world. Uh, but basically what, we show, what I showed you there is uh, data, the list view, data binding, uh, grabbing, using XA, XHR, XML HTTP request, a uh, little bit of promises, creating a custom class. And I can make, this code will be available afterwards. Um, and if you want it sooner, just uh, send me an email. And 
we'll keep going. So there are a bunch of controls that are available. So essentially, you have list view, list view. You you can also have semantic zoom, and I showed you in the in the cookbook application that date picker, flip view. Uh, menus, app bars. So you definitely want to use these controls that are available. There are a bunch more. There's a sample within the MSDN that goes through all the controls. Uh, so you definitely want to want, want to look at that. Now, I've talked to all about WinJS and how do you leverage WinJS and the app model and the controls that are available. If you have some existing code, if you use something like uh, jQuery or Dojo, you can bring it into your Windows 8 application. Uh, I have brought in jQuery in a different application and it does work with some modifications. So you will have to modify jQuery. Um, basically it does a lot of uh, inner and outer HTML uh, settings, uh, properties. It uses those properties and you do get some warnings and uh, I believe you did get some errors in there. So you have to understand, um, you know, the, uh, the sandboxing model, the security, web context versus local context. So make sure you're aware of that. Um, my recommendation is if you have existing code, mix and match within your Windows 8 app. Um, but one thing you really want to do is adhere to the Windows UI and personality, the modern UI, and make sure that is uh, your, your app blends into the, into the platform. So building Windows uh, 8 apps, HTML, you can build great applications uh, that are performant, that look as though they are native applications. Uh, I know there's some misconceptions out there about building HTML and hey, it's not a real programming language. Um, there's a lot of native uh, apps within Windows 8 that ship as HTML. Uh, some of the Bing uh, applications are HTML. The mail app is HTML. Um, so it is, it is part of the platform. It's not just a, uh, you know, one-off that Microsoft's doing. It's part of the platform and it, you can build nice, performant, fast applications using HTML on Windows 8. So with that, I'd like to thank you. Uh, we're going to take a short little break and we'll be back with, a, with another session on some more Windows 8 and HTML development.